Hello, you multi misplaced malt mentions. Yeah, good malt mention. And thank you to Ray Fenton Story, uh, also in brackets Raphael, uh, for that malt mention introducing Ralphie Review 959 Extras. We're in the Bothy. The Bothy, as you can see, has been transformed um, <laughs> since last year. Uh, this is my second review of the year 2023. So I, I think that although at the moment it's very contemporary, in about 10 years time it will actually be quite historical because things in the world are changing so rapidly due to us living in the age of technology. But it's not just the technology, it's the technology to talk about whiskies and to discuss all these new whiskies that um, are appearing on the shelves of our shops, whether we're shopping in shops in the high street, in the town or city, or whether we're shopping online. And um, one of the little shining stars of 2023 is this. It's from Isla. It's my whiskey of the year for 2023. It's 10 year old peated Port Charlotte from Brochlady Distillery. And it's bottled at 50%, unchill filtered, and natural colour, because I'm sure I saw it somewhere. It says it somewhere. Oh my goodness, where does it say it? It's got to say it somewhere. And it doesn't. <laughs> Maybe my last bottle does. They're very similar, but information can change slightly between bottlings and you hardly even know. So I better not confuse these two. That's the newest one, the latest one I've, I've reviewed. And this is the one I reviewed a few months ago. So I'm going to put them side by side, bring another glass down, pour a dram from each bottle and just talk you through whether I'm noticing any batch variations because batch variations are a big, big issue to whisky buyers. I'm going to talk a little bit about it just to kind of keep you right, malt mates. So first of all, go one pour. I love a creaky, squeaky cork. No, we drop more. Oh, this will last me all evening. Perfect. I can tell what, which bottle switch, by the way. The very, very dark green bottles, which is a great colour for a, for a whiskey bottle. But it's just transparent enough that I can see that the fill level in my last review from the first time I bought it is halfway down the bottle, whereas in my most recent review, it's about three quarters full. Because when I'm doing my practice and rehearsals, uh, tasting whiskey before I start to comment about it and review it. I don't actually have that much volume of whiskey. I keep the portion small and focus on just the tiniest of tastes. And this is what you want to avoid when you're getting to know whiskey. It's no gulping, no glugging and no swigging. Um, it, it can be very pleasant, it can be very nice, but you're not learning a lot from it. And if, when, if you take too much volume of alcohol into your palate, Particularly when you're, you know, when you're tasting, and not, not so much uh, an issue when you're nosing whiskey, but when you're tasting a whiskey and you take too much, the alcohol floods your tongue and you don't get a proper taste. So, I have equal measures and looking at the glasses, you can see that the colour is virtually identical. There you go. That's it. <laughs> yes, I was about to mix my glasses up. Uh, but I've not. One teaspoon, that's five millilitres, into one glass. Five millilitres into the other glass. So it's exactly the same amount of water. And I'm just going to start by just rolling it around the glass a little bit. 
when you're a wine drinker, you shake the glass because there's a lot less alcohol in the volume of liquid. With wine, it's about 125 to 14%. With whiskey, this is now down probably about 44%. So far more alcohol. So you have to take it more gently. When you start to agitate the glass, you're chasing off the smells from the whiskey too fast. Particularly if you're holding the glass in the palm of your hand and it's warming rapidly. So you want to have either a stemmed glass or holding at the base of your Glencairn glass. This, this applies even more so if you're in a hot country near the equator, if you're in India for example, or in South Africa, or, or in, in South America, Central America. I'm noticing a slight difference already. Bear in mind, I've bought these several months apart and whiskey's made up in batches. Now, for a, a big distillery, they'll be making big batches of hundreds, if not thousands of casks into a stainless steel tank where they'll mix it all together, allow it to settle, then they'll bottle it. So you'd be talking about 10,000 bottles, even 20, 25,000 bottles from one particular bottling. But a small distillery like Bruchlari, particularly when this is one version of what they produce, this is the, this is the middle peating version, because they've got the Bruchlari standard, which is unpeated, and they've got the Octomore, which is the heavily peated, and this in the middle, in the right in the middle, is Port Charlotte. Although it, you can confuse Port Charlotte with Octomore, and it's understandable. But you're dealing with much smaller batches, and there's no point in a distillery putting out too much whiskey at once because it means that wherever it's going, it's just going to sit in the shelf for longer because retailers know what the demand is, how much they're going to sell. So that will dictate what they buy in because they're not going to overstock in certain whiskies because storage space is valuable for them. So they'll let the distilleries know, well, um, we can... This is a new whiskey coming out. We'll take we'll take one case or we'll take two cases just to try and see. So when when a whiskey becomes more much more established, as Port Charlotte is now becoming, that there'll be bigger demand and therefore there'll be bigger volumes of batches. So there'll be a, a more space between batches. Meanwhile, it's up to the warehouse manager to try and sustain the quality of the experience. Now, notice what I'm saying here. They, they're not sustaining the exact flavour because that's rather difficult to do, particularly when you're dealing with smaller batches of smaller volume. So in fact, what their focus will be on is sustaining the quality with a very slight difference in personality or the, the version of the whiskey. And I think this is what I'm noticing here. There's more kind of pineapple and lemon oil on this particular whiskey, whilst on the, the same brand that I reviewed several months ago, it's a little bit more cereal notes, a little bit more barley sugar, cereal and barley flourish. Yeah, they definitely, they nose, I mean, I've not even tasted them yet and already they're nosing differently. But am I bothered? Am I worried? Am I concerned? Absolutely not. Because between batches, the personality can vary very slightly. But so long as they can maintain the quality, and this is really down to just how many good casks they've got maturing whiskey in the warehouse. That's, that's as simple as that. The more per higher proportion of good quality casks you have, the far easier it becomes when it's your job at the distillery to replicate previous batches. Now what they'll do, there's a little bit of insider for you, they'll have a team, rather than lying in one single person, they'll have the one person, usually the manager or, or deputy, who will say, right, we need another 30 casks to make up a new batch, what did we use last time? We'll use the same again, right? And we'll leave a, we'll leave a couple of casks short. And then what they'll do is 
they'll marry the whiskey together, which they certainly do at Brochlady, because they've got their own bottling plant, which is a huge, huge bonus to any distillery to be bottling your own on location, using local water, which Brochlady do. And it's important. It makes a significant difference, particularly with the way prices are going. So what you'll have is a team then goes into the blending room or the office or wherever's handy, maybe the staff room. They'll simply have unmarked bottles and say, right, this is batch A, this is batch B, this is batch C, batch D. Right, I've put the glasses out, we've, spin, we've mixed them around, can you tell any difference between them? And usually because they're experienced and they know their own product better than any other product, they know their own signature of the distillery because they're making the stuff, they'll be able to kind of pick out the slight differences. But then they're saying, but our customers, will our customers feel this is a positive experience or a negative experience? In other words, can we sort of upgrade this latest batch with putting some older whiskey in, say some 14 year old, sherry matured. So it's not quite the same as the last batch, but it will, it will keep the customer happy. That's what it boils down to. Um, getting exact batches of, of whiskey from one to another to another to another is a lot easier if you're Glenfiddich, producing 12 year old Glenfiddich, and it's all done in refill ex-bourbon casks, which are well engineered beforehand, and you've got a light spirit, and you've got huge volumes, so it's relatively easy to sustain that continuity. Some distillers get it badly wrong. Now and again, a batch will come through from some distillery, I won't name any at the moment, and it's an absolute stinker. You honestly wonder why they let it out their front door, particularly in the age of the internet. Really, they're making a mistake, a serious mistake. People resent it. People, and more than ever before, people are resenting bad buys. When they buy a bottle of whiskey and they say, is it me? It must be me. Is it my medication? If I change my diet, am I, am I, am I not well or something? And then, and then you go to a whiskey club or you get a group of friends around and say, right, smell this whiskey, taste this whiskey, tell me, is that good to you? And the feedback comes back, no, it's not. Even better, if you've got something left over from the last time you bought a, bo bottle, bo bought a bottle, that's what I'm trying to say, of that whiskey. Um, and at that point, you've got immediate points of reference, which is the best reference you can possibly have, which is another good reason for never ever completely finishing your last bottle of whiskey. Always keep some aside, because you can use it for comparisons from your next bottling. And at that point, you can go online about it. You can complain to the retailer. That's your first port of call. If you've bought a bad batch, you take that bottle back to the retailer and say, I'm really not happy with this. This is the reason why. Here's my tasting notes. And I've underlined in red what's bad about it. Now, that's the, it's up to the retailer. The retailer could be totally disinterested and just blank you, at which point you let everybody know about your experience and then they lose some customers. Optionally, the retailer will say, hang about, let's have a wee taste, they'll get a glass out. They'll, they'll possibly have a bottle open in the shop for their own tasting, and then they'll just compare the two. They'll say, oh my goodness, you're right. This is ridiculous. Now, this is ridiculous, you know. I tell you what, can I, I won't give you your money back, but I'll, I'll let you swap it for another bottling. Meanwhile, the retailer that can then, then send that bottle back to their supplier with specifying the faults. See, it's one thing when an occasional customer makes a complaint to a distillery, but it's a completely bit different ball game when several retailers, their immediate customers, are complaining because the threat to the distillery is that they no longer want to stock their products if it's upsetting their customers because they can certainly find plenty of other whiskies to fill that space in the shelf. It's business. Let's have a taste of these. <sighs> Absolutely dis delicious. So citrusy, this is going into its citrusy phase. 
beautiful, creamy, custardy, grain-rich, butterscotch citrus. Fantastic. If you want to know more, check out my review 959. The last review I did before this one. And here's the one from, my la from last year, a few months ago, when I first tasted this whisky. More eau de cologne. Just as good. Definitely different. Absolutely different. But wonderful in its own way. So different flavours, slightly diff same basic flavour, different subtleties, different signatures within it, but both equally as fantastic. Mission accomplished. So a big congratulations to Brock Laddie. What intrigues me is how you can get such a convincingly phenolic whisky when you're operating the tallest stills on Isla with lots and lots of reflux. To make this quality of whisky, you've got to adapt to your mechanism of production and you've got to know the stills and run them a little bit faster to chase over these heavy phenolic notes and perhaps cool down a little bit faster in, in, the, in, the, in the exchange coil in your water cooling system. And th this is just, it's an absolute joy. If you like peated whiskies, both of these bottles, they're equally as good. And um, I would imagine that come another batch late in 2023, it's going to change slightly again as demand increases. And it would be very interesting to do a triple bottle comparison. I might even do that. We'll see how it goes. I've got a busy year ahead of me, mock mates. I've got a lot of I've got a lot of whiskies and rums and occasional bourbons and even a few ryes to review. Well, at least one rye I've got planned for later in the year. And um, th that's us. I, I'll, I'll leave it. I, I, I'm realise. I'm, I'm now aware. If I start to talk a little bit more about batch comparisons, the whole video is going to get a bit too long. So I'm just going to call it quits now while I'm ahead, while I've still got your interest. Thank you for watching. Um, you're, if this is your first time in my channel, welcome to Ralphie.com, um, the home of um, independent, authentic, original whiskey reviews. Um, it's my purpose, it's my role in the internet and um, I'm quite, ha quite, quite happy to be doing it after 14 years, roughly. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do. Click the like button, clickety-click. And uh, if you want to leave a comment, please do leave a comment. I'm Ralphie, thank you for watching. And one final thing before I go, I do have a Patreon channel, patreon.com. You'll find me as Ralphie, R-A-L-F-Y, and you can subscribe for extra extras and live streams because I'm doing more live streams this year for my Patreon subscribers. Bye.